When looking at the material lab it's difficult not to get sidetracked into interesting details but uh, I'll try and make this an overview and not go into too much detail and then you can leave that to looking at the other tutorials that are available for the details that uh, you can get through the Bryce Tutorials site and also you should consider if you really want to get into uh, the details of how the material lab operates and how textures work then there is the Bryce Mentoring DVD so as I say I'll try and make this an overview and not get too bogged down in details so if I create a Bryce primitive here is a cylinder and make it a little bit bigger so we can look at it in the render and it's coming in grey default grey so in the material lab we have here the default grey material now these channels depending which channel you choose are driven by different components of the texture that you set in them in in their default state you see you've got no textures in any of the four channels available so we'll begin by putting a texture into this uh, top left blob here channel A and I'm going to select this by holding the shift key down and clicking on the name and that opens the texture library and I'm going to start with this check blue which is a quite simple material. We've got a preview here and uh, we've got actual selection set in the preview mode so we get an idea of what it looks like. So there's our check view and it's parametric mapped and if we go into the texture transformation tools here, this little green blob, then we can control things like the, uh, the scale of it, which is altering the frequency of the pattern, um, its rotation, so you can see we can alter its rotation, and an offset here that allows us to move it through space. And these, the way these scalings operate is also dependent on its mapping mode, and we've got mapping mode selections here. I'm not going to go into what the mapping modes do, we're just looking where the selection options are. This button here takes you into the texture source editor or deep texture editor, interchangeable uh, descriptions. And if we go in there, the important thing to note here, apart from the way this operates, which as I say is covered in other tutorials, is that you have access through this button to the texture library, the same texture library that we obtained through holding shift down and clicking on the name before so that's a way to save textures so we have got this little preview of the texture and our little preview window and you'll see we've got uh, the color here value here alpha channel and a bump channel so if the blob is in any of these it will respond to the color channel if for some reason that channel isn't available then Bryce will try to select another channel to generate some kind of output. So, you know, turning off the colour here, you can see it's turned red. Well, that's a bit of a strange response. But the reason for that is it's picked it out of this part of the, uh, the deep text editor. So, you need to experiment to determine, because there are a lot of combinations where the the channel choice will come from because it is proper possible and this is covered in other tutorials to do things like get the color information from the bump channel and that can create effects but okay not getting too deep into things so these op uh, controls here will respond to the color channel uh, diffusion ambience specularity metallicity those four respond to the alpha channel bump height to the bump channel displacement we're not going to talk about because it's broken and buggy and it doesn't respond correctly to the channels or the mapping mode anisotropy right you will notice there is a color blob here what happens with anisotropy is that this color this RGB value is interpreted as a three-dimensional vector in a very similar way to normal mapping and as a result responds to the color channel though you can trick it to respond to the normal map which appears to be generated from the bump channel but uh, that's going a bit too deep again transparency and reflection respond to the alpha channel so when you select a texture component you see previews here then you need to consider which they're responding to things get a little bit more complicated inevitably when we start introducing 
more than one texture to different channels. So holding the control key down and clicking on this B channel still in the diffuse allows us to engage two texture components simultaneously and these are combined in a sort of altitude blend. The altitude blend is a mixture of object and world space. We'll, we'll examine that in a second but first of all we'll look at where this texture has come from. Now if we hold the shift key down and click on the name you'll see that it's come from this currently selected uh, basic library. It's picked one out at random and when it picks one out at random and it's picked out from here, this is the one by the looks of it, into an empty channel component there, so it's in, come into this uh, channel here, B, which was formerly empty, it comes in complete with the uh, scaling settings, rotation, offset and mapping mode. And that's important because at the point where we change this, so we just look at this, it's 175 noughts and noughts and world space for the one we actually wanted. Hold shift key down, click on the name and I'll use these basic spots. It, this basic spots is now scaled according to the previous texture which might not have been the situation that I wanted. Uh, obviously we'd like say so we've carefully designed this material now, we've spent a long time and uh, we want to be in, a, be in a position where we can swap the position of these two texture components. So uh, how can we go about doing that? Well there's no way to drag and drop them and there's no little menu to do it. You have to save them and reload them. Uh, so if we just take a note of the settings, so this one's 74 or minus 30, some settings, some settings, and this one's 175. Well first of all I'm going to have to do is hold shift down and add that to this library. So there it is, it's appeared at the end. And uh, that's Camtasia Studio playing me up there, so I'll just have to check out and go back in and go through the same procedure again hold the shift key down on basic spots and add that agree to that and it's popped it in at the end and then I think well it's going to be easy enough now I've saved those both to the library I just uh, go shift select that's put that one in the other place shift select and that's put one in the other place except it's not doesn't look like they've been swapped around and the problem is that the settings associated with those texture components have not been restored when they pulled out the library. So that's a bit of a drawback, so that didn't work. Now if you want to do this, we'll just have a look how it looks in this render view, and retain the settings, what you need to do is trick Bryce. So what, what you need to do here is save it in a category of its own. So we need to add a category so we we'll go a new cat there and then add that on its own so it should now be in that category if it's worked properly it's not displaying it but I bet it is Let's see there it is a new category right and then we need another new category so new cat 2 for the other texture component so hold the shift, shift key down click on the name we've got new cat 2 selected and add that so there we go so that's, that's Camtasia again. It's a little bit inconvenient when that happens, but so now we're in a position to swap these two over. We're going to deselect the two channels, and uh, we need to make sure we're going to this check in the B channel. So we need to make sure that bef before we go in next time with the empty channels that the B channel is pointing at the correct one for random selection. So the B channel wants to be this this one, the check channel, so we need to make sure that the channel with only that one selected is available because it's going to make a random choice from this and it's going to be that one. And at that point, because it's coming into an empty channel, it will bring in the appropriate scaling settings and mapping mode, which will be parametric and these settings. So now exit, go back into the material and hit B and that's brought all the settings in and the material and it seems a bit fiddly. Now we want to trick Bryce again to bring in the appropriate one to A. So what we do is we go into the textures library and select new cat 2. So when it makes a random choice now it can only get this one it'll bring in with its settings. So hold the control key down and click on 
B and that will bring one into A and it will have brought it in with the appropriate settings so now if we exit that's actually swapped the two channels around uh, that seems very fiddly this uh, perhaps a bit of a long-winded way of doing it but uh, that is the way to do it if you don't want to have to write down all the settings it all depends on how complicated the settings you've got are and uh, otherwise what you could do is just bring them in and then change these settings accordingly and change the mapping modes accordingly but uh, if you want to automate the process that's the way to do it so let's have a look at how this blend between A and B is working it's an altitude blend but it's also sort of object orientated as well because so here we have our object and it's blending vertically but if we introduce an object with the same material on it scales the blend between the two so depending on the height of this other object that's got the same material it's affecting the blend so that's a bit odd and somewhat difficult to use and also if we get rid of the ground plane you'll see that if it passes below the horizon any distance it's mirrored and starts going in the the opposite direction again so that's a bit odd too and likewise if you uh, if you duplicate it then this is starts to affect the way it appears on the second object and another one added above the horizon change the changes the way it scales so on the whole I don't find that blending method particularly useful because it's a bit uh, it's a bit curious in the way it behaves put the ground plane back in and let's look at the other option briefly for blending so we've got A and B and we can use channel C to blend A and B so we'll uh, bear in mind if we add it now it will draw upon whatever the current category is which is these spots so uh, that might be appropriate choice or not I don't know but that's I'm just showing you where it'll come from so hold control key down click on C and now these two are blended according to the alpha in this texture component none of these are effective in D D just operates on its own and A and B and C can operate on their own but if you wanted to blend them in this way then the, with the multiple selection C is the one that does the control, overall control between these two components. So if we change this basic spots to uh, something else, let's, uh, I will just modify the, the texture, okay? So in the deep texture editor, we'll, uh, we'll open some controls, we'll take the noise and we'll just make it nothing, and we'll use a sine wave here and make sure the output is alpha. So we'll give white, full white alpha output and you can see when the alpha output is white channel B is the one that's selected and likewise we go back in and we'll mo modify this filter if I can, I'll just reset it modify it down so that it's producing fully black then you get channel A and therefore if you if you have grey oops I was I'm getting ahead of myself there if we have grey here so I'll reset that and I'll just uh, reduce the amplitude so it's not flat because that would be it wouldn't make any difference but if, it, if there was a texture component there it would start filtering it we're giving a, a grey output you'll get a 50% mixture between A and B and then if you want to make things a little more complex or we can go in the uh, the texture library here and choose another output so uh, we'll go for this basic triangle uh, we'll see what the alpha output is so it's these triangles and in that case the triangles will be used to filter between the A and B channels so I'll just lower the frequency of that so the triangles are a bit more visible see it's produced a bit of an odd output there we'll try a uh, different mapping mode or parametric perhaps so we can see the effect of the triangles on this texture I'll bring the camera in we go so the alpha on channel C is selecting between A and B and uh, so you've got to uh, combination of those channels together. When you make a material, depending on what the material you have in mind is, will probably determine where you start in any of these channels. But knowing that you can take any component and add it to the library and bring it back out, with the caveat that you need to be aware that the 
scaling factors, rotation and offset, and the mapping mode may change as a result of just copying it straight out of the library, unless you isolate it and create a category of its own, and then draw it out into an empty blob. Then, uh, obviously, it's uh, something just to consider when you're building these materials, otherwise you can get funny effects. And that is a basic overview of how you can use the material lab. These controls here, you'll have seen these little um, well, columns that you can draw up and down, they allow you to modify the scale on those ones on the top, so if you depress them then it modifies the scale value accordingly. It's not, I don't find these very useful controls really and, and these allow you to alter the value but I tend to find it easier just to uh, select it and type the value in. Uh, for example in some cases like bump height with this control you can scale it up to 100 but uh, if you enter a figure you can enter a figure that's much larger. This is not possible with these other settings at, at least at the moment but it would be nice if it was. But at least with bump height then you get some interesting effects by uh, over uh, excessive bump height levels or if uh, the texture component itself isn't producing a tremendously powerful bump pattern um, because you might be compromised when you generate the texture because you want subtle transitions and because the channels are all generated together in the components then uh, you might find like suppose let's set, set this up then sine wave um, if, we, if we have a very 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 subtle bump because we wanted a particular effect on the colour output then you could still uh, just having the bump, you could still boost it here. So if it, that was the bump component, so you could still get a decent bump response from a very low level output on the bump channel, for example. So that's just something to be aware of. Otherwise, as I say, you've got the choice of looking at the free videos that are linked through on um, BriceTutorials.com and also if you really want to go into a great deal of depth, then there's the Bryce Mentoring DVD which has uh, extended range of videos and content that's associated with those videos to offer a guide as to uh, as to how you how you can uh, combine different uh, material components and texture components and their effect of the mapping modes which can get really quite involved but uh, as I said I didn't really want to go to a very high level of complexity in this because it's really intended as an overview okay then that's the end of the video